Hi, I'm Councillor Wasim Zuffer, Councillor for Lazelles. Today I've spent uh, nearly two hours at a Birmingham City Council licensing, licensing subcommittee hearing uh, via uh, weblink, uh, where they were discussing the alcohol application, alcohol license application for the new restaurant on 2A Barker Street. Um, I was objecting to it, uh, I spoke against it. Um, the application applicant had a barrister representing um, him al alongside himself. Um, and I felt it was really, really important for me on behalf of the residents of Les Elves. Um, over 430 people signed a petition. Unfortunately, the petition was ruled out because they started before the application went in. Um, but I thought it was really, really important to speak up on behalf of the residents because we know, residents who live in Les Elves know, that if a license for alcohol is granted at these premises, uh, it will have a detrimental impact on the quality of life of residents. Uh, close to these premises, in particular those residents who live around the corner on Barker Street. Uh, so I've raised those objections. Uh, the committee will make a decision in, in, in the next uh, few days and I will notify you of the decision. Um, you can stay tuned and watch uh, my submission uh, on this particular video. Uh, and remember, we will continue, irrespective of the decision of the committee, we will continue to campaign for a better, for a safer and a healthier Lazelles for all. Uh, we'll now move... move to Councillor uh, Wazim Zafa, who is making representation. Councillor Zafa, uh, 20 minutes. Over to you, thank you. Th thank you, Chair, and thank you to the committee for giving me this opportunity to um, raise concerns and objections on behalf of the constituents uh, who elected me as a councillor for Lazelles. Um, I want to start at the outset to say that I'm very much pro-business and in particular pro-local business. Uh, I'm very much welcome that this site, which um, has not been used for many years, will now be uh, moving forward as a restaurant. And in particular, we, we welcome the diversity of offer, which is reflective of the needs of not just Lazelles, but of Northwest Birmingham. So absolutely welcome, welcome the business and the fact that it'll be creating employment uh, and supporting the local economy too. However, I, we, we have grave concerns about the application uh, for a premises license um, um, uh, to sell alcohol. Uh, whilst we uh, acknowledge that the uh, applicant has reduced the hours of operation, we still are not uh, are not happy with that. I'm hearing a um, uh, yeah, I've got a mobile phone. I think. Uh, listen, uh, if you can, I'll try and continue. Thank you, yeah. Chair. Um, I, I, I accept that the members of the committee, uh, some of you or all of you may be aware of the environment in Lazelles, but I just want to give you the context of the, the environment that we're, that this premises license um, uh, will, will, will be in place if, it, if this license is granted today. Um, Lazelles and, and in particular Villa Cross is a fascinating area, very vibrant and creative area, but it's not been shy of uh, problems over the years. Uh, I am not aware of a premises license uh, within the vicinity of this area. However, over the years, there have been many licenses uh, and these licenses have, have either been revoked or pe the businesses have moved on. Uh, can, can I can I ask you to stop there for a minute, uh, Councillor Zappa? Uh, whoever's got that call, can they please cancel it? Otherwise, I'll cancel this meeting. Thank you, Councillor Zappa. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, as I was saying, there, there's been a number of premises license, premises license in the past within the vicinity of Villa Cross, Villa Road, um, uh, and within this area. There was a premise license, uh, and I just want to set that said, I, I don't want to in any way um, uh, um, link these two directly because the applicant had nothing to do with the running of these. I just, I'm just trying explaining the environment that uh, we're operating in. There was a license revoked by the licensing committee a few months ago, which is 200 yards away from this on Barker Street. And the reason uh, that, that that license was revoked, uh, the community supported this, the police supported this, and ultimately the committee supported this, was because the landlord could not handle uh, the, the type of clientele that attended this. The vast majority of those people that attended that particular uh, premises, that particular licensed premises, were not from Lazelles. They would come in, park in all sorts of ways, and the sort of complaints I had, um, um, you know, from my from my constituents over the last few years, and I, at times, in particular, early, early hours of the morning on the weekend, I would literally get uh, constituents emailing me, some of them phoning me, crying their life was hell. People would urinate, people would be drinking in their front gardens, they had absolutely no privacy. Uh, and, and to be fair to the landlady, 
Um, I, I, don't, I, I think it was an impossible task for her. She could not handle this. Uh, she, she, despite whatever intervention she was putting in or not putting in, she could not handle this. There have been pubs uh, in the past and licensed premises on the Villa Road um, that no longer exist because of the clientele they attract. These people do not live here. They do not live in Lazelles, but they end up in Lazelles uh, because they see a licensed premises and they think they can operate from there. Um, uh, in terms of parking, there have been um, we're, we're in the process of introdu introducing interventions around uh, low traffic, a low traffic neighbourhood in Lazelles, uh, and the whole point of that is to reduce uh, the amount of traffic on the residential roads here. This um, application, I'm convinced, would do the opposite and increase traffic down the residential road of Barker Street, which is already hugely problematic. In fact, the last uh, TRO traffic regulation order that we carried out was to increase double yellow double uh, yellow lines on this particular road because it was difficult for vehicles to get uh, vehicles to get through with parked vehicles on both sides and two-way traffic. And uh, having a premise like this would would oh. hinder the, the issues. I I I accept that the. Um, even though I've not seen a written agreement and I'm not sure if the committee has either. Um, and I'm not exactly sure which site on Heathrow Road the applicant is referring to. I'd, I'd like I'd like at some stage some some particular clarity in terms of the address. Um, but 12 spaces when you've got four security staff, you've also got your own staff and management and then you've got 85 customers is 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 problematic. And I'm going to come come on in a second to some of the pictures I've received from constituents in respect of illegal parking that that's happened since uh, since um, these premises opened uh, as a restaurant. Um, committee has ruled out. I understand they have ruled out a petition um, that was signed by over 400 residents because it was started before the application was made. Uh, the reason this petition was started was because a sign went up outside these premises, which had African Village Bar and Restaurant, which is the same name as the premises that existed on the Birchfield Road. The, the re local residents who started this petition and signed this petition were not aware whether the licensing application has been made or not. They simply saw the sign and that triggered over 400 local residents to sign this petition. Sorry, I, I got to interrupt. I have to interrupt you, Council. Are you making an application for these petitions to be allowed? Yes or no? I'm giving some background to the nature of why this petition started. And I, I as a local councillor, have received Ooh. dozens and dozens of complaints. And that, and on behalf of those complaints, I made my objection, which was well in time. But, I'm, but the, the, uh, what I'm trying to explain to the committee here through you, Chair, is the fact that the 430 people signed a petition not based on a, an application to licensing, but because the signs went up outside the premises. I did not put those signs up. The council did not put those signs up. The applicant put those signs up. Right now, in, to, in terms of um, in terms of uh, the, the applicant's um, uh, decision to introduce security personnel, um, when I go to a restaurant with my family, I, I look at the environment that I go to. If I walk in and I see uh, security guards at the entrance, at times, I think twice. I would think twice about a premise because I'd think, why is why are the security guard located? Security guards located at this particular site. Are they expecting the wrong sort of crowd at this particular premises? Respectfully, chair, I would suggest that by by stating that by by the applicant and the applicant's representative stating that they will have security guards, they are quite clearly expecting the wrong sort of clientele at their at their premise. So I, I, I would argue, what sort of impression are you creating? I do not see any other security guards at any other restaurants on the Lazelles Road. There are some restaurants there um, that, that cater for the needs of, of the local community and the wider community. They do not have, I, I've not come across any, any other security guards. That is not the nature of the, of the sort of businesses that operate within this vicinity. So Chair, um, Uh, you've got Councillor no, Zaffa, no, we've lost you. Can you we've hear me, sir? Sound. I, I can now. Yes, so I'm not sure. Sound. Sorry, I'm not sure how that went on to mute. Um, committee, I, I really fear if this license is granted, it will have a huge detrimental impact on my constituents. And ultimately, we will be recreating the environment that was created on Barker Street only a few months ago. The sigh of relief and the celebration 
Balkans was revoked, was revoked, was immense. It was, you know, it was a huge relief for them. They, they, some of them said to me they got their lives back. That is the, the level of problems we had. We had illegal barbecues. We had street parties outside these premises. And ultimately, I fear that we'll be recreating that environment by granting this license because the nature of the, the clientele that would be attracted to this place will be very, very similar to the nature of clients that were attracted to that place a few hundred yards away and the nature of clients that turned up to the African village on Birchfield Road, where Birchfield Neighbourhood Forum, who are a very able, independent community activists um, who care for the community, you know, they, they, they led a campaign on this, they were in constant contact with their councillors, uh, and, and they ultimately had a sigh of relief when African Village moved out of uh, out of those particular premises for whatever reason. But I, I, I fear um, in an area which has substantial issues around exempt accommodation, around HMOs, um, has a history of huge challenges, and in particular in the Villa Cross, um, you know, Lazelle's, and I hate to refer to the disturbances and the riots, but th those are the sort of things, the challenges that this community has had to come through. And when these things happen, it takes years and years to recover from this. Right? I remember I, I lived um, and I've lived all my life on Leonard Road, which is off Heathfield Road. So I don't live too far from uh, the, these premises whatsoever. I live within walking distance. And I remember as a kid, being very, very reluctant and being told by my parents to stay away from particular locations, which are not too far from this particular area. And I just, I, I could not look my residents in the eye, those that live in particular on Barker Street, and say to them that, don't worry, everything will be fine if this license is granted. And I fear we will end up in a situation that we will have to start a campaign very soon into uh, the license being granted to ask for, the, come back to this committee to get this license revoked. And we don't need to go through that situation. I'm pretty confident that an African village restaurant um, without, a, without a license will be very, very successful. It'll be supported by the local community. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a good sized premise for for, for a restaurant in itself, um, and and it will, it, will be a vibrant, it will be a vibrant place. There is absolutely no need to do this. And in terms of illegal parking, you've got yellow lines ultimately all the way around these premises, or or, or zigzag lines because you're you're on a junction, so there's no immediate parking. Um, I've been sent pictures of vehicles not just parked on the road itself, on those zigzag lines, and a number of pictures. I've been I've had a picture. Which, I would, which for me is hard to believe that it's not connected to these premises. Our vehicle parked between the railing, so parked on the pavement between the railing and the premises, right? So the only way that vehicle would have got up there is through the, uh, the, the traffic lights, the gap between the traffic lights onto the railing. Now, I would, I've not seen that before. I've lived in this neighborhood for 40 years and I would find it very, very difficult um, and, and I stand to be corrected that this vehicle is not connected to the premises. I'm not saying it's, you know, it could be somebody doing some refurbishing work, it could be the delivery. You know, we don't know how this premise will get deliveries. Where will they, where will they park their delivery vehicles? What is their access to, to these premises? Because for any business, that is very, very important um, to, to, be able to, to be able to access uh, deliveries. We've, 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 you know, we've currently got businesses across this city who are raising concerns about the lack of access to delivery when we're trying to introduce measures around low traffic neighborhoods and social distancing measures on high streets. So how would they access their deliveries without parking illegally? Um, so I, I, there, there is grave concerns. And I, in conclusion, I would just ask committee that under, to, 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 to understand the, the environment, to understand the, the context of what's been happening, to understand some of the more recent history so I'm not going back decades, I'm going back to just in the last 12 months of what has happened when a licensing premises on this same road has, has been operating and the, 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 the whole concern is created for the community and the detrimental impact is out to quality of life. And I fear with security guards, with the reduction of I think 30 odd minutes to opening, if an if a alcohol license is still granted, this place would attract people who would think, I know they're saying that this is not a nightclub that was operating just down the road, on the Birch Road. The name and the type, the, uh, of the, type, the name of the business and the people running the business is exactly the same. If they attract the same sort of crowd they attracted there at the old Crown and Cushion site, my residents, will, you know, it would be absolute hell for them, in particular in the early hours of the morning. 
I will conclude there. I'm happy to. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. Councillor okay, so Striker Wells. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, and, and thank you, Councillor Zaffer. Uh, the association between alcohol and antisocial behaviour uh, seems to have had a fairly difficult um, time on in this particular location, as a result of which a number of um, a number of venues have had to ha be, had their licences revoked. Um, I suppose in my own mind there is a question about whether in fact this is primarily a bar or a restaurant. I got the feeling from the applicant's advocate that uh, it's primarily a restaurant and my assumption would be if it's primarily a restaurant that the kind of antisocial behaviour that exists in the past might not exist. Uh, so what I'm really asking is, have you in any shape or form been reassured by what you've heard about how the how the how the venue may be different from previous venues? Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Well Straker Wells, for your for your question. Um, I, I've not been convinced by by any means, and, and disappointingly so. Um, the, the, the applicant has known of my objection. They've known that there's there's concern in the community. They've not been out. They've not reached out to any of the community activists. They've not tried to build a relationship with anybody. They've not tried to contact me other than send me this statement, which they sent to the licensing committee. Right? I've objected previously um, to to applications in Lazelles uh, on all sorts of reasons, and very quickly. Those who are making the application reach out to you, they reassure you, they put in interventions and that's led me to withdraw my, my, my request to come to a hearing because, you know, if we can be reassured, we, me and the community, and more important the community, we wouldn't need to come before you today. We've had no reassurances before this. We've had no assurance, you know, reassurances during this meeting and ultimately for me, this is a an attempt by this applicant to reopen a business that was closed down. What Birchwood Road's probably a mile and a half down. I'll, I'll probably be standing by stand corrected by the chair, who's got more knowledge of the local area than I have. But it's not that far. Uh, you know, it's it's walking distance from this place. So they're going to ultimately attract the same people that were attracted to the nightclub. Their behaviours will be very similar, and you're you know you're real. You know, the community is basically saying they're reopening the nightclub. On our, on our doorstep. That's what they, they're attempting to do. So for me, the bar becomes comes before the restaurant in their title, in the title that's up on the, on the signs. And for me, it's more of a bar than a restaurant. Thank you. And, and um, you have seen the conditions that were agreed with environmental health in relation to prevention of crime and disorder, protection of children from harm, prevention of public nuisance and public safety. Um, having seen those conditions, uh, would you feel that those conditions would uh, bring uh, reassurance or indeed um, a change of view to the residents who may have had objections in the past? Through you, Chair, again, absolutely not. Uh, and as I said at the outset, um, uh, I, I don't know what conditions to, uh, would, would, would be able to uh, have a premise license in that particular location and not attract antisocial behaviour and not, you know, antisocial behaviour of a very, very serious nature um, uh, we're talking about here. Um, it's it's just, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not convinced by those conditions whatsoever. Thank you. And then final question from me, Chair. Um, I've listened carefully to what has been said. Uh, however, the police have not made an objection and I'm aware that normally they are fairly robust and, and um, they are not shy if they feel that there is an issue around antisocial behaviour or around crime and disorder, they will make representations. But in this particular case, um, there isn't one. Again, um, would you feel that that might be a reassurance? So, uh, through you, Chair, I'm very disappointed that the, uh, the Westminster Police did not submit a, an objection. They, I know there have been conversations between the local community and the local police team, and I'm aware that there's been conversations between the local police team, uh, the local neighbourhood police team, and the, uh, lo the the licensing police officers. Um, um, uh, and it was the police that led the 
they, they, they quite clearly, with the lack of resources, could, they couldn't handle the challenges just down the road from this particular uh, application. Uh, and they led the campaign, which was supported by us as a community, to revoke the other license. Um, so I, I'm not sure why they've they failed to do so. I know that from the conversation that I'm absolutely I'm not trying to represent the views of West Midlands Police. They've not made an objection, but I know from the conversations I've had with some of the local neighbourhood police officers uh, and neighbourhood police officers, in particular local PCSO, who's been around a very very long time. You know they are concerned about this because, like me, they may and I say use the word may feel that we'll end up in a similar place. To where we ended up with the, with the with the other um, uh, licensed premises, two hundred yards away from this. Thank you, Councillor Zephyr. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Straker Wells. Councillor Locke. Uh, not nothing for me. I think uh, Councillor Straker Wells has asked most of what I wanted to know anyway. Uh, Councillor Straker Wells has asked most of what I wanted to know anyway. Councillor Zaffa, uh, you've uh, mentioned quite a lot the African village that was at uh, Wellington Road, Birchfield Road. Uh, that was uh, a different premises with different licensing uh, rules. Uh, this one will now close at 11.30 whereas the one down at uh, Birchfield uh, was, had long, much longer hours. Doesn't that give you some thought that we could uh, be dealing with something completely different? Chair, absolutely not. Uh, the, 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 it's the same group of people who, were, who are running this business, that were running that particular business. The name's literally the same. Uh, they'll attract the same clientele. At 11.30, uh, they may decide to uh, close the bar, but that will not stop the challenges going onto the streets of Lazelles. Um, and um, th that's ultimately what we had with this other licensed premises uh, a few hundred yards away from this. Um, so, you know, there's nothing stopping somebody buying drinks um, and then ending up onto the streets of Lazelles, uh, on people's inside people's front gardens, on their front garden walls. Um, um, it's for me. I'm I've got absolutely, I'm absolutely clear. There is a direct correlation in terms of what was uh, the type of business at Birchfield Road and what will end up here. And I, in in essence. I think the environment there uh, the, uh, at the African Village, the old Crown and Cushion pub, you had a you had a substantial sized car park there. Um, it was a uh, you know it was a slightly different environment. The, the nearest residential properties are probably on Wilmore Road um, or the the, uh, the the side road next to it, so a bit further away. You're literally where, the, where number two Barker Street is a few doors away. Um, from from other residential properties, it's too too close. And to have a licensed premises, we've seen having a licensed premises so close to a residential premise in this particular lo location, the effect it has. And 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 the other thing I'll say is, you know, and where I've got um, some sympathy with this applicant um, is, I, I don't think it will be that what will happen will be entirely under the control of the applicant. Uh, uh, I think there'll be crowds that could gather here that, ha that are not their customers. But the key thing is the licensed premises will be a catalyst to bring these people together. And that's what, what we're trying to do. We've, you know, we, with the observatory being closed down by licensing, we've seen a spike in blues parties in Lazelles and Hansworth. In particular, we've seen some illegal parties during uh, COVID and it's been a challenge for the police to, um, uh, to, to close these down and the impact that's had on the community. Right, so it's a similar sort of crowd that's going from one place to another, and that is what we're trying to prevent. And having a crowd gathered on Villa Cross, and 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 the, and and in particular, so close to a premise license, I think will be hugely detrimental to to the life, uh, to the quality of life of my residents. Okay, thank you very much, um, Joanne. Uh, have you any questions for the councillor? No, thank you, Chair. Right, we now move to the uh, summing up stage.
uh, and we will go back to you, Councillor Zappa, if you can uh, sum up your your case, please. Um, Chair, thank you. I make a plea to the committee. Um, this is about people's lives. People, When people buy a house, they don't buy a house, they buy a home. And they expect to live in a home where they're safe and they're secure and their family is safe and secure, uh, whether they buy or they rent that pro that particular pro uh, home. Um, and to, cr to have a licensed premise opening late so close to their residential home, um, it, it bring, it's brought back nightmares of what's happened recently. Despite the reassurances we've received from the applicant and the applicant's representatives, despite the conditions that have been drafted by uh, officers of the council with the applicant, the community is still not convinced that they will be enough. And we do not know what will be enough because we've got nightmares of similar sort of premises and the impact that has had on the quality of, the quality of life for our residents. I plead with this committee to reject this application today and let the residents of Lazelles uh, live a peaceful life. The peaceful life they've had over the last few months when uh, the Brave Licensing Committee took the decision to revoke the licence uh, for, the, for the premises, which is only a couple of hundred yards away from this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr.